Hello all. This is Muhammad Hanif. Once again, welcomes you to this lab session on digital signal processing. So today we'll be designing low pass FIR printer in MATLAB. So let's start. CLC. Clear all and then close all. So here the basic idea is to first we'll be designing one impulse response for low pass filter and then we'll design or we'll generate two different signals namely x1 and x2 and then either we'll add we'll try to add those two signals and we'll see that uh, x1 and x2 having two different uh, frequency bands and then after uh, doing filter on these two signals we'll try to uh, get the signal which is having a low frequency and or we can we can say that which is under the cutoff frequency that frequency will be uh, available in the output of the filter so starting with designing with uh, cutoff uh, starting with sampling frequency so input enter the sampling frequency and then taking ts as 1 upon fs and now we are taking cutoff frequency so we input enter the cutoff frequency and this cutoff frequency it will be in analog format so here we can write that analog frequency to convert it in a digital frequency we will define as a omega c so omega c it will be 2 into pi into fc by fs so this will gives you equivalent digital cutoff frequency. Okay. And so starting first we have to design one impulse response. So as we are trying to design with a fire filter, we'll be having a, a little selected span of the frequency. So first we're defining that as L input enter the length and this length must be in odd number as we are writing program in uh, MATLAB and here the index zero will not be included. And negative side negative part of the signal also will not be defined here so we'll try to define one odd number and that where we can try to frame this uh, filter coefficients from negative to positive side so here we basically we do need of odd number enter the length of we say that fir filter So is actually we can say as a window size, right? And then defining H of n. So H of n it will be having the zeros, the length of L. So one comma L. And then so as I said that. So we do uh, we are why we are taking this odd number means to try to uh, we are trying to frame it a uh, filter coefficients in one window so where as index starts 
if you consider the original one, which will be having the negative side as well as positive side, including the zero. The so that zeroth part, it will be the center in this odd number. So we will define that here. So C as a center, and how we can get the center value for this L? So L plus one, and then divide it with, with two. Now defining H n starting with for loop for loop and defining n is equals to starting from 1 to c minus 1 so first we try to define the negative side of uh, filter so negative side means so h of n is equals to so here filter uh, response for low pass filter fr filter is uh, sin omega c into n by pi n so we have to define that here so this is basically a sync pulse so here we will try to write sine omega c into n minus c and this value will be divided with pi into n so n means n minus c and and this will be the negative side and at the zero zero will be at exactly at center so that center value will be h of c is equals to we'll define it with omega c by pi or else it will take as a zero here so that's why and next for the positive side again we need one for loop and we we'll start with k is equals to one and the length of it will goes up to the same c minus one and here as already we have negative side and the some same negative side will be equal with this positive side so as uh, uh, depends on the symmetry property here we can write h of c plus k will, will be equal with h of c minus the end now we can uh, define or we can uh, design a plot to plot this one so for plotting we do need one length yes so we'll take as n starting from 0 uh, to l minus 1 so here uh, we are trying to index start uh, with 0 as in just plot it will just display with 0 okay so that's why we are writing l minus 1 or else we would have written 1 to l okay so writing the first figure figure 1 so stem n comma h with respect to n will be plotting h values okay so we'll be having labels called x label x label will be n values and y label will have h of n values and the title for this will be causal impulse response of FIR NPS right so we will try to uh, run it up to here and let's see how we get impulse response so entering the sampling frequency taking here 8000 and enter the cutoff frequency let's say 2000 and enter the length so that I am giving 51 so this is impulse response right so just to see here you can see that index is uh, displaying 0 and it goes up to 50 and if you include that this 25th part so totally if you start with 0 so totally the length will be 51 okay now continuing the program will if the this size is uh, 
so as we are taking the 51 only so uh, after doing a low pass filter the signal accuracy will not be uh, great so if you want you can uh, take the uh, 256 samples so here we can write that also so n uh, log base of 2 with capital l and and then so so log of l means whatever the value you, you gives here it will comes in uh, fractions so we'll try to make it round off with the this keyword seal seal means sealing it to a round of value so here seal of n and then taking capital n say max max means uh, it will uh, take the maximum number from the defined two values or uh, some values okay so here set 256 comma 2 power n so in this whichever this maximum it will take that and now we'll calculate fft for the small h so fft of small h with respect to n and then k is equals to 0 colon n minus 1. So once again, we'll try to plot another figure, okay, for filter, okay. So that's why we are taking here k starting from 0 and going up to capital N minus 1. So figure. Two and here let so plot it with three comma one comma one. So let's we'll have uh, three plots. So first plot for stem k value with re, uh, with respect to k we'll draw absolute value of capital H. And then labeling for this x label will be capital K, y label it will be absolute values of H K. And this title for this one will be it will be the magnitude response and the response how we got this by doing FFT so we got with DFT of FIR LPF. And next, we shall have a, uh, a digital frequency also. So that's why we'll write omega is equals to start from zero, then with a multiply with the steps of two pi by n, it goes up to two of two pi by n. Let's we'll put this in brackets. Okay. So normally digital frequency will be uh, framed from zero to two pi. So that's why we are writing here zero to two pi. Okay. And taking omega is equals to omega by pi. And now. The plot so this is will be 3 comma 1 comma 2 okay this is the second term and here we'll try to plot it with w and absolute value of h 
okay and x label for this one will be omega by pi yes and then y label for this one so y label will be the magnitude so how we got this magnitude from the uh, absolute value of h e power j omega power j omega isn't it so this will be magnitude and then title for this is magnitude response with dt of t of fir lpf okay and we'll be having a third plot for equivalent analog frequency so for that one we'll take small f and it start at zero fs by n and goes up to fs minus fs by n right defining the subplot so here 3 comma 1 comma and it would be 3 yes so here we'll try to plot f comma absolute value of h and then x label x label will be frequency in hertz because this is in analog and uh, y label will be uh, just h of j omega right and this will be magnitude response uh, what is this this is equivalent equivalent analog analog LPF magnitude response of equivalent analog LPF so we'll try to run up to here so save it and then run it so once again starting with 8000 sampling frequency and cutoff frequency as earlier 2000 and then 51 we got error at 58 so this is the first one i will see 38 So omega W is having okay uh, thirty-eight. So so here uh, in here we made a mistake. So two it will be two in up to two pi and then we have to minus it with two pi by n. Uh, this is correct. Now if we run once again so 8000 and then cutoff frequency will be 2000 and then size is 51 so here the second figure you can see here So this is the impulse response and then the magnitude response of this one is he has given here so uh, here you can see that we wrote here 256 
so in this as we have given 51 the maximum value will be the 256 so that's why the plotting is done up to 256 here it comes up to 256 and the middle value it will be omega by pi and here you can see that this is the uh, analog cutoff uh, analog uh, low pass filter uh, uh, plotting so here you can see that, that this is the cutoff frequency we are displaying here 2000 okay now so designing the impulse response is over and now we have to design two signals the name day x1 and x2 so starting with nts so nts will be required for generating two uh, signals so starting with 0 to t and the value will be in with the intervals of ts and 1 minus up to here okay and then so first f1 taking the first frequency so say input enter the frequency for the frequency of first signal x1 okay And next F2 so same but this one will be X2 and this one will be second signal okay so defining X1 as cos of 2 into pi into F1 into N Yes. Copying this and next making as F2 and this will be X2. Okay. And then calculating X. So here I am taking, I am adding two signals X1 and X2. Uh, we can do any uh, mathematical operation here we can do multiplication and division so depends on that we, got, we are going to get, get a second signal if we do multiplication here it will be dsbsc of those two signals and then later we can uh, do filter to recover either x1 or x2 so in this x1 and x2 whichever there is lower frequency and which is under the cutoff frequency that will be available at the output of uh, after low pass filter so here we'll try to give two different frequencies f1 and f2 where we try to give f1 as less than cutoff frequency and f2 as more than uh, cutoff frequency okay now defining y1 so y1 here we try to accommodate it with the uh, convolution of uh, our impulse response with x1 similarly we will be having y2 where we try to do the convolution in with response uh, with uh, respect to h with h2 uh, x2 similarly we will be having y that is also a convolution of h and x okay so here first y1 so for that one we need zeros 1 comma n s so one comma it will be this maximum value that will be n so here one n so let's copy this and we'll change this as a y2 and this as a just y now we need to do filtering right 
filtering operation on uh, using convolution right so here we will be writing that program so for n is equals to so normally we start with uh, index 1 but here we will try to take the index start from the size of l so we will go with this size okay so starting from l and then goes up to capital n okay so this capital n is our so it is a maximum value between the so here okay so either it will take 256 or more than 256 if if you are if, if the length is more than 256 then the n value will be 2 power of small n okay so and next taking another for loop so here k is equals to start with 1 and it would goes up to length of l so already we have seen in the previous uh, video how we can uh, write the convolution program that is first we will try to write with y1 of n is equals to y1 of n plus and here comes the uh, convolution program h of n into x of so x1 of n minus k plus 1 okay so we will copy the same thing and paste it here so this will be y2 this will be y2 and this will be x2 and this will be just x this will be just y and this will be just y so here this is for convolution of our x1 signal and this is the convolution with respect to x2 signal and this is the convolution with respect to third signal that is x1 plus x2 okay and we'll end it here and end okay so uh, filtering is over here now just we have to plot and see how many plots we can make here so so for every signal we'll draw x1 and then y1 x2 and then y2 so we do need a uh, six plots so starting with uh, say uh, figure 3 here and then subplotting it uh, uh, with 3 uh, 3 rows and then say 2 columns and then starting with 1 as I said that we need uh, 6 uh, plot subplot and then first we will try to plot with x1 and x1 is starting at l okay with mm, some l plus some some values so we can either you can go with 256 or any any other value so i'm just taking uh, 250 here some random number you you can take any any other value also okay and then x label so in x label we'll be having we'll be having uh, just small n values okay so n then y label so y label will be input signal and input signal x1 x1 of n right and then title title so title will be input uh, so this one will be just exponent value and here we just have input signal 
x1 of n okay so first plot is over now we will copy from here and then paste it here and then first change this to second plot and here second plot will be y1 of n right so here it will be having same n values and x label x label will be uh, y1 of n and this will be the this is the lpf for lpf of input signal x1 of right so because y1 is consisting of convolution of x1 and h of n so that's why it will be the low possibility right and next pasting it once again so this time this will be the third and instead of x1 we will go with x2 here and this will be x2 and this will be x2 similarly pasting one more time and this time this will be fourth plot and this one will be y of 2 right I will change this y of 1 okay y of 1 x2 and y2 and this is n and this is y2 and this will be lpf of input signal x of n all right and pasting one more time and say this is fifth one and here instead of x we will try to x and this is not input signal this is the addition of two signals right this is a combination of input signals x1 of plus x2 of right and then pasting it for the final time this will be the 6 and it will be the x or this will be y and y and this is lp of four input signal x okay right now this is it the done the program is over here now we'll run and we'll check what will be the response now once again running it so entering the sampling frequency 8000 and cutoff frequency here we let's go with once again 2000 and 51 okay so here till now we have seen so this is impulse response the first figure and then second figure this one and next here we have to it is asking the enter the frequency of so as we have uh, given the cutoff frequency as uh, 2000 so cutoff frequency we have the given 2000 so we have to uh, put, uh, remind this and so x1 i am giving 500 x2 let's go with more than 2000 so right here we'll give 3000 not error at 74 Okay, so the error. So here we have to define n n s as the length of n t s. Okay, and instead of n here, we will write n s. Okay, 
So this will be the next. Okay, now once again we'll run the program. So here sampling frequency 8000 and then cutoff frequency is say 2000, size is 51. So here up to here is so we have seen already right now giving the first frequency as 500 and then next is 3000 more than 2000 so here i am going with 3000 so here you can see and then 3500 so here these are the outputs so here you can see that this is the first signal of frequency of 500 okay and this is the LPF output so when here the signal is 1 here you can see that because this 500 is uh, under the uh, cutoff frequency 200 so we can see the gain is uh, almost equal with the same as input and next here we are giving uh, designing x2 signal and uh, here the input is 1 and here you can see that the gain of this one is 0 0.01 that means the frequency is uh, above that's a 3000 uh, above 2000 cutoff frequency and this is x1 plus x2 so some random signal is generated here and from this you can see that x1 the which the frequency is having the less than uh, cutoff frequency is available here okay so uh, i hope you understand this so this is the first resp impulse response of the signal and then uh, this is the uh, filter co uh, according to filter coefficients we have drawn this and then this is the uh, we have taken two signals x1 and x2 and then we have run uh, filtering on these two signals okay thank you